You might think because I caught and released this bass within minutes that there is a 100% chance that it will live. Unfortunately, that's just not the case. A larger percentage than you think of catch and release fish actually die for a number of reasons. So if this bass might die, what about bass that are caught during tournaments? What percentage of bass that are hauled around in live wells and weighed in die after being released? These percentages might shock you. Hey guys, Tyler Berger here with Bass Fishing HQ. Bass fishing has become extremely popular over the last several decades, not only across the United States, but also in different parts of the world, such as Mexico, Japan, and even Africa. With the invention of YouTube and YouTube fishing channels, it seems that more and more people are getting into bass fishing every single day. Not only has bass fishing become extremely popular, but bass tournaments have grown in popularity as well. Anglers compete in bass tournaments and win big prizes nearly every single week of the year. You can now watch the biggest bass fishing tours like Bassmaster and Major League Fishing on some of the biggest sports channels in the world like Fox and ESPN. On many of our lakes, rivers, and reservoirs, there is a bass tournament every single week if not multiple times per week. I recently made a video of exactly where tournament caught bass go after they have been released and I literally had hundreds of comments of people wanting to know what the bass tournament mortality rate was and how it impacts our fisheries. There seem to be a lot of fishermen that hate bass tournaments because so many fish die in a tournament. So I decided to take a long hard look at this to be able to provide you with content based on data and actual studies that have been done and not just my personal opinion. I reviewed 17 studies that all had different but similar results which I find extremely interesting and show how tournament bass fishermen and non-tournament bass fishermen may be impacting our future in fishing. So stay tuned, it's going to be a good one. I think we can all agree that bass mortality is not something we want to see. This is a bad thing for both tournament anglers and non-tournament anglers. When it comes to tournament fishing, we know that some bass die as a result of being caught during tournaments. But what do the numbers tell us and what do these numbers actually mean? In a tournament, you have two types of mortality. Bass brought dead to the weigh-in are considered to be initial mortality. These fish have died as a result of being hooked in a sensitive area or handled incorrectly. You also have delayed delayed mortality. This occurs to bass that appear to be healthy when released after the weigh-in, but die within a few hours or days, which most tournament anglers don't see. In one of the studies I spoke about in my Where Tournament Bass Go video, researchers looked at nine high-level tournaments that were held on Lake Champlain over the course of two years, in which 2,300 bass were tagged. During this study, the initial mortality rate of largemouth bass was 2.41% and smallmouth bass was 3.89%. Delayed mortality was 3.13% and 4.26% respectively. With Lake Champlain being a northern clearwater lake, lake temperatures typically stay pretty cool, even in the summer, which can greatly increase the survival rates of bass. However, looking at other studies, these numbers are not the norm, and mortality rates can be significantly higher. One of the most popular studies ever done on this subject was done by a group of Texas Tech University professors led by a man named Gene R. Wild. Their research compiled information from 130 tournaments that were held between 1972 and 1996. Tournaments held during the 1970s, initial mortality was substantial, with a reported 19.5% of bass brought dead to the scales. However, during the 1980s and 1990s, initial mortality decreased significantly to 6.6 and 6.5%. Again, Initial mortality is only part of the equation. Delayed mortality was 10.4% in the 1970s, 20.9% in the 1980s, and 23.3% in the 1990s. And overall mortality was 26.2% and 28.3%. At the time, this information was groundbreaking and it has served as the foundation for the BASS booklet Keeping Bass Alive, which since its release in 2002 has set the standard for bass tournaments and anglers. Another study done on Lake Eufaula in Alabama, researchers looked at 14 tournaments held between May and September and found that initial mortality ranged from 2.4% to 18.5% with the average being 8.9%. Delayed mortality ranged from 1.3% 
to 50%, with the average being 22%. This accumulated to a total mortality of 30.8%. This ranged from 9.1% to 68.4% among those 14 tournaments. Although these numbers are concerning, it's extremely important to know that these 14 tournaments were held in the 1990s, and bass tournament technology and procedures have changed a lot since then. It is also important to know that these tournaments were held in the hottest months of the year in Alabama, when oxygen levels are at their lowest. With that being said, let's talk quick about the deadliest factor associated with tournament mortality rates, which is water temperature. After looking at all these studies, there was a huge discrepancy among tournament mortality rates ranging from zero to nearly 70%. However, there was a statistic that was consistent in literally every single study, water temperature. Water temp plays a huge role in bass mortality. The hotter the water, the lower the dissolved oxygen, and the higher the tournament mortality rate. In every single article where temperature was mentioned, 25 degrees Celsius or 77 degrees Fahrenheit came up almost every single time. Water temps hotter than 77 degrees Fahrenheit, bass mortality drastically increases and water temp that is lower than 77 degrees Fahrenheit, bass mortality can be extremely low. For example, a study done in Connecticut, a northern state that stays relatively cool throughout the year, initial mortality for largemouth and smallmouth bass was 2.2% and 4.8% respectively. And delayed mortality was 1% and 2.8%. As you can see, the bass mortality was a lot different than the numbers done on Lake Eufaula during the summer. Again, in the Connecticut study, one of the biggest factors was water temp, and for much of this study, the water temp was below 77 degrees Fahrenheit. If you have ever wondered why BASS goes up north during the summer, it is partly because their biologists know that it is better for the bass than fishing southern reservoirs in the heat of the summer. There are many articles online about this subject done in the recent years, however, they all take information and data from 2007 and before. I think that it is safe to say that these mortality percentages have decreased with new live well technology, the invention of live well treatments like G-Juice, as well as the general awareness of keeping bass alive. So the question becomes, how does all of this bass mortality impact our fisheries? While this is an extremely complex question, it is important to know that tournament anglers are not the only ones killing bass. As a matter of fact, non-tournament anglers, the person who catch and releases immediately, are also killing bass. It may even even be killing more bass than you think. It may be hard to understand, but just because you catch a fish, take a quick look at it, and throw it back doesn't mean that that fish is going to live. We have all been there before. You catch a fish, it's hooked a little funny, maybe even bleeding. You release it, and within minutes, you can see that fish dying on the surface of the water. One study conducted in Texas, researchers looked specifically at catch and release fishing only. They found that 22% of bass that were caught and released died within 72 hours of being released. There were a number of reasons for fish death, but two of the biggest reasons included fish that were bleeding after hook removal and fish that were hooked deep in the throat. Of the fish that were bleeding or hooked deep in the throat, roughly 48% died. Another study conducted on Lake Sam Rayburn in Texas found that non-tournament anglers kill just as many bass as those who put them in a live well, haul them around all day, bring them to a weigh-in, and then release them. This study was conducted by the Texas Parks and Wildlife, and they found that tournament mortality varied from 6 to 28% of all bass angling mortality. They also found that catch and release anglers contributed to the death of 10 to 31% of all bass mortality. Basically what this means is, if 100 bass died in a given year by anglers, 6 to 28 of them would have been killed by tournament anglers, 10 to 31 of them would have been killed by catch and release anglers, and the rest would have been killed by those who intentionally harvest bass for the dinner table. So you might be thinking, why are catch and release anglers killing just as many bass as tournament anglers? And the simple answer is, there are many more non-tournament anglers than tournament anglers. In this particular study done, in Texas, tournament angling accounted for 19% of the total angling effort for black bass, meaning for every one tournament angler, there are four catch and release anglers. So anglers who say that tournament fishermen are killing bass, well, they are correct. 
However, based on various studies, anglers who are fishing for money aren't killing any more bass than the catch and release anglers who share the same water. Some people may argue that tournament formats like major league fishing are better for the sport of bass fishing, opposed to organizations like BASS who conduct a weigh-in. But simply put, depending on water conditions, a five bass limit tournament angler might catch 15 fish per day before saving fish for future tournament days. However, you see MLF anglers sometimes catch 40 fish per day on a good day and rarely hold off catching more fish. Given the mortality rates we discussed above among both tournament anglers and catch and release anglers, which one do you think is better for a fishery? With all that being said, the biggest question that I have are all these tournaments and non-tournament fishing pressure hurting the future of fishing. This is a very hard question to answer given the fact that every single body of water is different. The Sam Rayburn study we talked about earlier calculated there are 300 tournaments held on Sam Rayburn every single year. That is nearly a tournament every single day. However, they concluded that tournament anglers catch only 5% of the total bass population every year. So if 30% of the bass in tournaments on Sam Rayburn died, that is only 1% to 2% of the total bass population, which is not significant enough to hurt a bass population. Another huge part of this equation that a lot of people don't think about is natural mortality. Bass die every single year due to disease diseases, parasites, old age, predation of other fish, predation of birds, etc. One study showed that natural mortality of both smallmouth and largemouth bass was 35%, meaning if you stocked 100 bass in a lake and never fished for them for an entire year, at the end of that year, 35 of them would have died naturally. It's the circle of life. Another thing that is the circle of life that people don't always consider is that a female bass can lay 2,000 to 7,000 eggs per pound of body weight every year, meaning that a four pound female on average lays about 18,000 eggs. While all these eggs don't turn into adult bass, a certain percentage does. And while a large percentage of bass die every year, there's also a large percentage of bass hatched every year. If populations of fish like crappie and walleye can survive when they are traditionally harvested, looking at the data, I think bass can survive too. However, again, all lakes, rivers, reservoirs, and ponds are a little different. So I believe that whether you fish tournaments or not, we should all learn to take care of the fish that we catch. From reading through these studies, there are a number of ways that you can greatly increase the chance of a bass's survival, which I will be discussing in a video coming soon. So make sure to subscribe if you wanna see that video in the future. This video is brought to you by the Bass Hat. This is a unique hat made with a wooden bass patch on the top. So if you click on the link in the description, you can pick up one of these hats and greatly help the Bass Fishing HQ channel.